My name is Rastio Lamosh and today's and in today's lesson I'll be talking about Vim. Uh, how to code in Vim to be exact. So our outline will be something like this and you can see I have opened uh, I have written the outline in my Vim. So first we should talk about what is Vim. Then why should I use it? And finally why code in Vim? It's old and clumsy. So uh, I want to produce a series, probably three videos, where uh, first in this video I'll introduce Vim and uh, try to persuade you why you should really code in it, learn it and uh, be fluent in Vim. In the second video I'll show you some uh, commands in Vim, uh, the most used commands and uh, in the last video I'll show you how you can install Vim plugins uh, so you can have a nice Vim like I have. So this is uh, this will be a result. So for example, I have this in my Vim. Uh, I can I have a, this line as you can see down there. So my Vim is really nice. So the result will be a nice Vim with uh, code highlighting and uh, code how to complete, ready to code. So let's start. What is Vim? Vim is a text editor, pretty advanced text editor, which uh, is used in uh, in your console, in your terminal. So it is not a graphical user interface application. It's not uh, not something like Sublime Text, for which you need uh, to have a graphical user interface. Vim is used from within your command line. So, for example, if I close my Vim, and I'm in command line, I'm using uh, MacBook and I have item open. So in my command line, when I type Vim is a command. So when I type Vim and some file, for example, how to code in Vim, it will open that file. And yeah, so so this is Vim. So uh, it's a text editor. It can be used for just editing some configuration files or uh, from configuration files to, to the whole coding. I've uh, used Vim for coding PHP, JavaScript, HTML, and Ruby on, Ruby on Rails applications, so it can really be used for anything. And some people are using Vim, purely Vim, nothing else. So, yeah. Uh, now, why should I use it? So, yeah, why should you really use it? In today's world, we have a lot of uh, editors, for example, Sublime Text or Atom from GitHub or um, editors from company JetBrains, PHP Storm, RubyMine, or IntelliJ, and they are really advanced. So why should you learn Vim? Why should you care and use it? Uh, I think it's uh, nice to learn uh, Vim because when you start to uh, deep, uh, when you start to dig deep into programming, you will um, stumble uh, upon some conf server configuration. For example, if you are a web developer and you have a VPS server, you want to SSH into the server and edit some configuration files. And you can't really use uh, uh, graphic user interface editors on that server because you have only SSH access to the server. So instead of uh, downloading the file, editing it uh, locally on your computer, you can just open Vim on the remote server and edit the file there. So you, you save time and edit the file on remote servers. It, uh, also, Vim is a very advanced editor. It is not just about um, make, uh, editing file and it's advanced in the sense that it has plenty of commands, shortcuts that uh, makes that make you stronger, faster, and uh, more be and better coder. So it's it's like you're learning to type uh, with your ten fingers, like QWERTY. When you learn QWERTY. Uh, for the first few weeks it's really hard because you need to memorize all the positions of all the keys but when you know how to type QWERTY it's then you become really fast and fluent in writing on your keyboard so it's like or, or driving car it takes time to learn but when you when you know it you are really proficient and uh, better faster so Vim in enables you to be better coder by writing the code and editing it uh, in a quick, quicker way. So, and why should, okay, so maybe Vim for editing files, that's, that's nice, but why should I code in Vim? 
Well, uh, to be honest, I don't code in Vim anymore. I'm using WebStorm from JetBrains, but only because uh, WebStorm or PHP Storm has Vim emulation. So you can use Vim commands, Vim, Vim like editing experience in uh, modern editors. So it's not that when you learn Vim, you have to use this command line Vim, which uh, is not that good compared to the modern editors. You can also use Vim emulation in other modern applications. So the skill, the Vim, Vim skill is transferable to modern editors. And uh, even if you wanted to really code in Vim, uh, uh, there was a period in my life when I was coding just in Vim for half, half, half a year or so. And uh, what's good about it that uh, it really takes no, uh, not in, not uh, too much memory, so it's really light, and you can open many files. You can have tabs in Vim. You can have sidebar with files. You can have a surgeon surgeon replace with uh, Vim. Vim supports plugins, so you can extend the Vim uh, with plugins. I will talk about that in the third video. And when you extend the Vim with all the plugins, it really is no problem to code in it. So you can have a remote, you can have a quite good coding experience even when you are editing files on a remote server. And another good thing about Vim is that it is configured by some configuration files. It's usually called .vimrc and it is located in your home folder. So if I close this window and I can open it, vimrc. So this is my configuration file. Uh, I will talk about it more uh, in detail later. These are these are all my plugins that I use in the Vim. So oh, sorry, I opened second window. So vim vimrc. So as you can see, there are a lot of plugins and this is the configuration of my Vim. As you can see, it is 752 lines long. To be honest, I don't really know what all of these configuration uh, things do. I just copied this file and edited it to my needs from somebody else, but you can do as well. So if you copy, I have published my Vim configuration to, uh, to my GitHub. Uh, the link to the repository is in the video description. And if you copy all the configuration files and uh, run some commands you can you can have all the same vim experience on your mac or uh, on your ubuntu or linux on any other linux based uh, system without having to touch a line in the configuration file so vim is really transferable when i uh, when i uh, uh, rent a virtual private server or some server i usually copy my files vim configuration files to that server so i have a uh, all the nice things, all the plugins on my remote server. So it's it's a really good editor. So let's see what you can, for example, let's see some commands. I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the commands, but let's see how fast you can edit in, in Vim. So for example, this is how I can create a new line, line up, line about the line, select the line, copy lines, paste lines, under, under the paste, you can really jump to the end of the file, jump to the beginning of the file. You can do a lot of things, for example, scroll down, scroll up. You can really, I, I will talk about these commands in the second video, but uh, I just want to want to uh, show you how, how powerful Vim is. So when you learn how to, how to use Vim, you really become faster in your coding efforts. For example, I can jump to the closing Closing, uh, yes, closing quote, uh, added the character here, escape, undo, save, quit. So go back to my how to code in Vim. All right, so this is basically it. I, I, I believe that I persuaded you to use Vim because it's, it's something like uh, learning QWERTY, right? A lot of people uh, don't learn to write with all of their fingers. Like they say, well, I'm a coder, but I don't write all the time. I, I Two fingers are enough because most of the time I, I think and uh, when I write, I don't need to write with my all of my 10 fingers. But when you learn to write with 10 fingers, for example, 
you get that feeling that it is no longer a problem to write something. For example, if you are writing an article, uh, your uh, ideas can flow uh, faster to to the screen because you know instinct instinctively and uh, you know instinctively how to how to write with the fingers. So it's like when you learn to use Vim. I use Vim emulation in uh, WebStorm or PHP Storm, and it's really fast to navigate in the in the code editor, switch between tabs. Uh, I know that you can do all of these things without learning Vim. You can just uh, assign some shortcuts in, in, in those editors. But when you learn Vim, and uh, usually all the modern editors, Sublime Text included, have Vim emulation, you can just use all uh, the same shortcuts across the different editors. So you don't have to assign all the shortcuts in every uh, different editor you use. You just use Vim simulation and you have all the, the same commands in every every editor so that's it for today thanks for listening and i hope you enjoyed the video it, it is my first first video so uh yes <laughs> so have a nice day bye